good morning students today i am going to start chapter number 7 weavers iron smelters and factory owners from history and today's topics are number 1 is overview number 2 is indian textiles and the world market and number 3 is world tell us histories so students as you know very well that how britishers were interested and had a close connection with the conquest and colonization of india so students this chapter tells the story of the art and craft and indian industries during the time of british rule and this chapter is mainly focusing on two industries number 1 is textiles and number 2 is iron and steel industries so students in the 19th century textile and iron steel industries were crucial and very important for the industrial revolution in the all over the modern world because mechanized production of cotton textile made britain the foremost industrial nation just after the invention of many machines which were working mechanically all right so students during the starting of the 19th century due to the huge production of cotton and textile industry in 1850s britain came to be known as the workshop of the world all right listen carefully due to the huge production of cotton textile in the 1850s britain came to be known as the workshop of the world understood so students in previous chapter you have seen that how the english east india companies interested in trade and occupation with india and indian territories and how the pattern of trade change over the decades or year by year after that in the late 18th century the company also started buying goods in india and exporting them to england and in the market of europe making more and more profit through the sale okay so students students with the growth of industrial production and british industrialist began to see india as a vast market for their industrial products to sell in india and over the time manufactured goods from britain began to export in indian market so students one question will arise here that how did this affect indian crafts and industries and the lives of the people during the time of british rule in india understood after that your next topic is indian textiles and the world market so students now we will take a first look at 
textile production in India. So students, around 1750, India was by far the world's largest producer of cotton textile in all over the world. Before the British conquered Bengal. All right. And students, Indian textiles had long been renowned both for their fine quality and very good and best craftsmanship. So, students, the cotton products of India. extensively traded in southeast asia like java sumatra and penang and west and central asia also but from the 16th century european trading companies began buying indian textiles for sale in europe so students the work of Indian craftsmanship and Indian arts memorize of this flourishing trade and the craftsmanship of Indian weavers is preserved in many words still current in English and other languages. So students now we will see that how words tell us histories all right so students european traders first encountered fine cotton cloth from india carried by arab merchants in mosul in present day iraq and they began referring all finely woven textiles as muslin, a word that acquired wide currency. And when the Portuguese first came to India in search of spices, they landed in Calicut on the Kerala coast in southwest India. And the cotton textiles which Portuguese took back to Europe along with the spices of India came to be called calico, which became the general name for all cotton textiles. And students, there are many other words which point out about the popularity of Indian textile in Western world or Western markets. So students, in figure number three, you can see a page of an order book that the English East India Company sent to its representatives in Calcutta in 1730 to order a variety of cloth pieces in bulk. All right. And the order that year was for 589,000 pieces of cloth. And many other order book by the Britishers which contain a list of 98 varieties of cotton and silk cloths and these were known by their common name in the European trade as piece of goods. Usually woven cloth pieces that were 20, year, 20 yards long and one yard white understood after that students chins 
is derived from the Hindi word chint, a cloth with small and colorful flowery designs. Okay? And the word bandana term is derived from the word bandana, refers to any brightly colored and printed scarf for the neck or head. Okay. After that, students, the printed cotton cloth called chins causes or khasa and bandana. So, students, from the 1680s, there started a craze of printed Indian cotton textiles in England and Europe mainly for their very good and stylish floral designs, fine texture and due to its cheapness. And students, rich people of England including the Queen herself were cloths of Indian fabric understood and students the word bandana which refers to any bright colored and printed scarf for the neck or head and originally this term derived from the word bandana it means in Hindi for time and refer to a variety of brightly colored cloth produced through a method of tying and dyeing. Okay? And students, there were other cloths in the order book that were noted by their place of origin such as Kasim Bazar, Patna, Calcutta, Odisha, and Chakure. So students, now you can understand that the widespread use of such words in all over the world shows that how Indian textiles became popular in different parts of the world. All right, students. So, students, the explanation which I told you above, that is all related to the Indian cotton textiles and the method of craftsmanship. And above explanation shows that how Britishers were interested for Indian fabrics and cloths for its fine quality and cheapness. That's why Britishers came in India especially for trade and business. All right, students, students, listen my lecture carefully. And if you have any confusion or doubt, then contact to me. All right. Thank you and have a nice day.